Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of Joy Performing Webinar. And as uh, always, uh, uh, as our commitment, uh, we are committed to bring forward uh, some great leaders from the industry and very interesting topics. So we are here today with another interesting topic of uh, aligning uh, <clears throat> strategy with the goals. And uh, uh, we have uh, invited our eminent panelists from the tech background. And our focus is today to understand uh, the strategy alignment with the goals with respect to the technology uh, leaders. How do uh, technical people, how do technology leaders deal with the strategy, right? On a day-to-day -day basis. So uh, with that, let me uh, welcome uh, my, eminent, uh, my eminent panelist. Okay, uh, Vatsalya Jain, who is VP Engineering at Infogain, Siddharth Shandile, who is VP IT at Radiance Renewables, Vishal Bagh, who is Product Manager at V Group. Thank you, guys. Thank you for taking out time on uh, Thursday afternoon. Thank you. And uh, to uh, uh, just few uh, uh, a few things uh, uh, with respect to the webinar, please feel free to drop in your questions. Uh, of our audience in Q&A session. The Q&A session will be open. We'll be picking up uh, questions from, from those time to time. Okay, and let's start. And uh, with that, let me first of all invite uh, uh, our eminent panelists to share, briefly tell about their themselves, introduce, uh, tell our audience about themselves. So uh, let me first of all invite Vishal. Vishal, please introduce yourself. All right. Thank you, Ravi, and your entire team for making this uh, webinar possible and inviting me and having this great conversation with fellow panelists. My name is Vishal Bagh. I'm a product manager. I have been in product space for the last uh, 15 to 16 years now. Uh, over these years, I've been trying to find the balance between art and science of, of products. So that's kind of uh, my space that I've, I've been trying to work upon. I've been fortunate enough to work with some really great brands like Hewitt Associates, Aeon Corporation, BMC Softwares, and so on. And um, for again, very humbly, have been able to build a few products for clients like Dell, uh, Google, HCL, and so on and so forth. I primarily am a product management person, one of the the it's, it's kind of boring job like i said in in the pre conversation that we were having uh, but i'm the one who uh, basically writes up all the jiras uh, i'm the one who writes those acceptance criteria for you i'm the one who uh, takes care of those demos etc that you look at so before anybody else gets to see the product fortunately i'm the one who take a look at the feature or a product that gets developed and from then it moves on to the people for their uh, feedback and whatnot so I'm the first and the last defense for customers as well as the companies that I work for. Thank you so much. No, Vishal, I, I think so. That's a very important, very important role. Okay. And uh, uh, definitely uh, uh, everyone in, in your company and here everyone understands the role that you have to play and, and the burden, I'll say, you carry on your shoulders and the value that you give out to your customers is immense. Thank you, Vishal. What's it? Can we hear from you? Yeah, thank you, Ravi. Thank you for this opportunity. Hi, everyone. My name is Vatsalya. I'm part of the engineering leadership at Infogain. I come with a background of uh, a developer, grew through the ranks to be a program manager, engineering manager. And then lately, I'm diversified more myself more into an overall engineering leader. I lead large-scale digital transformation for large-scale customers. My long tenures have been with HL Technologies and Dell Services. They have been the substantial part of my life. I had the opportunity to live and work in the US. I was there in Boston for about six years, came back due to some personal family reasons. I had a short stint at a startup. I tried my hands working on building IoT and platforms for customers in a startup space that didn't last too long. I was out of funds. So then I got back to a corporate job. Uh, but then here, like in my present role, I generally lead engineering on building products and platforms on cloud and data. And for our key customers like FedEx and T-Mobile and Mitchell. So here it is more strategic, like as the topic yeah, resonates, working towards their mission and objectives what the customers are looking for. And that is something that I'm very passionate about. Another element of me, I'm a very people leader. I love to work with people, especially all the young crowd. 
and I believe there are a lot of energy and power that we can harness. So since I lead teams, I love mingle with them and that's the beauty of the relationship I carry. It's more like a servant leadership role, but then that's the role I love more than the engineering which I've been doing for the last 25 years. Over to you, Ravi. Thank you. Thank you, Vatsale. And, and I believe that's a gradual uh, a shift, uh, right? Uh, with the uh, uh, as, as, as you go on your career from engineering to strategic roles, and I'll I'll love to hear you uh, what you have to say and guide our audience. Uh, thank you, uh, Siddharth. Can, can we hear from you? Of course, of course, Ravi. Uh, first of all, good afternoon, and thank you to, uh, definitely for uh, getting me on uh, on this panel to talk about and. Uh, I and Vasile seem to be, you know, uh, a person who started their career in this almost similar era. And I started from insurance industry, been into the banking. Uh, my core was always into infrastructure and uh, basically technical support to the organization. So I started with uh, EBIX Incorporated and then worked with MD everywhere and moved to HSBC. Thereafter, I moved into hospitality. And uh, from hospitality, I came to engineering again in EPC sector. From EPC, I went to petroleum and energy. And presently, I'm into the solar energy. So uh, I would say I've actually worked in different segments of industry and supported uh, the infrastructure and applications in different segments, uh, wherein uh, not only internal, but uh, the external customers were also my customers and was directly interacting with customers in many locations, many many situations, and definitely uh, my uh, colleagues, all my peers were also my customers. So uh, I was uh, always facing challenges, uh, considering my external uh, customers, my company's customers, as well as my local customers. So that's been my journey, and yeah, uh, if we talk about, uh, uh, you probably know how you work in infrastructure, Everybody's problem is your problem. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Th th thank you, Siddharth. And uh, I think so. We have now a variety of experience uh, here on the webinar, right from uh, requirement uh, uh, gathering to delivery to uh, uh, moving, uh, moving, moving from strategic uh, engineering to strategy. And then uh, uh, Siddharth, in, in the form of Siddharth, I believe you are more hands on. And you have also have a fair share of career shift. Uh, where you have been like uh, in the engineering goals on also into the uh, uh, hardcore uh, technical roles also. Uh, thank you and welcome. Welcome. So uh, let's start uh, 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 with the topic and uh, as, as it says that aligning strategy with goals. So let us pick up this word strategy, okay? And how does it resonate with the with, with, with technology roadmaps, okay? So uh, let us deep dive into uh, strategic visions and the technological roadmap. Let's try to understand. So one of the uh, first question uh, uh, would be that comes to my mind is how do you approach crafting a strategy uh, that aligns with the long-term organizational goals, okay? And keeping in the mind the technical roadmaps. Uh, I'll, I'll come first to Vatsale. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Sure. So Ravi, that's a actually a very interesting question. So the way the world, when we started a career or 20 years back, strategy was like, oh, we are doing something. And then that strategy used to hold for say five years or 10 years. But you know, times have changed. So the agile practices came in. Things have been very, very like the, the lives have become short, especially after COVID where the VUCA world is there. So the long-term strategies have shrunk. Now they are in the time boxes of a year, possibly six months. And even in our organizations also, we've seen that shift. So yeah. while the overall organization mission and objective remains the same, for example, if you want to be a strategic partner with someone or we want to specialize in a core area or an expertise yeah. in like building our capabilities and say Gen AI. So yeah. the focus remains the same. But then how do we delve it? Is it just like we talk about strategy and forget it? And yeah. Does technology play a bigger role? So things have become very, very integrated. Technology has become right from being an enabler. It has become a partner. And everything around us, uh, every business has a mobile element, a web element, a social media element, analytics. Like I, I work a lot of projects on data analytics. It's like huge. Like uh, It surprises what organizations are thinking beyond those 
semantic analysis, the, the, the predictive analytics. So these are all data oriented things that are coming up. So a strategy overall remains the same. It is broken down into chunks, which are executionable. And again, these are like the technology being the, the key drivers. They are evolving. For example, we are working on a POC of Gen AI. The, I think Vishal spoke about uh, the product requirements. So we are doing a POC on how an epic could be broken down into stories. What are the mm -hmm. criteria? So work we used to take eight days. It is now done in like four hours. So the overall, the pace at what things are changing is fast. We are getting more efficiency. But then again, there's a lot of learning in the system that we need to do. So that's a tectonic shift that I see in the strategy and education. Very nice. So one of the things which I picked uh, 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 is technology, not just as an enabler, but as a partner. Yeah. And I think so it's, uh, if I it can reflect back, it all started with the whole governance thing, then digitization. And now I think so, yeah, that's a, a thank you for giving me that line, technology as a partner. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, so uh, let me come to Siddharth. Siddharth, now technology is a partner, okay? When we think about technology as a partner and we then take strategy okay and as uh, Vasile said now long term post covid long term strategies are not built they are more over short term maybe one year maybe six months okay so what do you uh, what are your insights okay uh, onto that technology is a partner and then is it also a partner in terms of executing that strategy short term strategy at the top I, I totally agree. I totally agree with what Sally has said. Now, uh, you know, the question of a long-term strategy is totally, you know, uh, it is evolved to the instant gratification now. Uh, no, no one wants to know what will I do after five years. No one mm -hmm. is no one is so sure about the technology train. What will that be after five years? Uh, mm -hmm. In fact, the application or, or the, uh, the product which I'm using now will be you know uh, substantially usable even after five years or three years so i i totally agree uh, it has uh, the the uh, longer goal has shrunk mm -hmm. and big mm -hmm. time however uh, you know uh, in my mind the organization goals uh, i will proceed to what where vatsile uh, uh, stopped it's actually uh, evolves involves Assessing the current capabilities, understanding market dynamics, uh, and then setting clear objectives and mm -hmm. regularly reviewing. Now, the mm -hmm. reviews earlier would happen every you know six months, one year, and then they would talk about their five-year strategy. That is probably moved down from three months to a quarter. Three, mm -hmm. Sorry, I mean, yeah, six months mm -hmm. to a quarter, or maybe mm -hmm. month and review meetings, and then you know this is your this is your annual goal. And uh, thereafter, you probably review uh, at, at the end uh, what has been your achievements and then you fail all around. And uh, there you do the corrections for your next steps. Mm. So definitely, uh, I am in sync with what Vatsile had said. Thank you, Siddharth. And uh, what I can pick uh, from you is, uh, what I can pick from you is basically now strategy and technology going uh, roadmaps going hand in hand okay despite Definitely. of thinking a uh, year or half yearly let us think about quarterly and then how we yeah. can move quarter to quarter see what is coming on in, in, uh, 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 as a block uh, uh, on a roadmaps and how to resolve this keeping the law, uh, uh, my strategy in the picture. Yeah, uh, right. super important, very important. Yes. Now, let me come to Vishal. Okay, a very interesting question which is coming to my mind. Okay, I'll connect. Uh, 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 let me connect it with the Jira. Okay, as we all know that uh, Jira. Okay, uh, and please, uh, I'm not limiting anybody's thought on, G on Jira or the use of Jira, but uh, I'm just trying to think strategy now in terms of the different projects at Jira. So how do you like cascade those strategic vision to actually hands-on with those technical roadmap in Jira? So how, how do you do that? 
So, uh, see the what I have. Uh, I, I started my career in two thousand and six, uh, and and after that, I have been working in different roles. Uh, the the shift that I've seen uh, is that uh, the strategy documents or the roadmaps are no more those holy grails that they used to be. They are mm -hmm. now more like uh, living and breathing documents that keep updating and that keep uh, getting course corrected and so on and so forth. Uh, I, I, an important and really interesting shift that I've seen in the leadership that I am dealing with today, or uh, fortunately, I am also able to lead a few teams now, uh, is that the leadership has become a little more flexible around course correcting, you know, admitting that, you know, let's shift a little, make a little bit of a change. So like mm -hmm. I said, that that's uh, the uh, roadmap or a backlog, as we call in product spaces, or even the strategy document overall, it it is like a living, breathing space. It kind of keeps mm -hmm. evolving, keeps changing. Sometimes it course correcting, sometimes even shutting down. So mm -hmm. all these things, they uh, it has helped, or I think that with more and more agile practices getting into uh, our systems inculcated, uh, it has resulted in people being open to that change now. Mm -hmm. So when you are planning for a particular strategy, uh, sorry, a particular product that you're working on, or maybe a project that you're working upon, you look at what your short term goals are, what your long term goals are, and based on that, you start creating the, uh, let's say, Jira, Jira features or Jira list uh, items mm -hmm. that you create. So what you are doing is you are aligning to a long term goal, and then you are trying to approach that with baby steps, with shorter steps. Mm -hmm. Every step that you're taking, you kind of evaluate it, you see the results. And then based on that, you take your next step. So that mm -hmm. is a huge shift that has happened from uh, earlier times to now. With mm -hmm. the with people getting more and more proficient on uh, tools like Jira, AHA, and so many other tools that are there in this space, uh, that visibility of what needs to be done. So basically mm -hmm. having something in your head is one thing, then putting it on a paper is is one is, is a different thing altogether. So when you are uh, using these tools, like uh, Vatsale was mentioning that these technology things have becoming an, are becoming an enabler now, I've seen them more and more senior leaderships are now interested in looking, how does it look in Jira? I used to work with mm -hmm. the vice president product management in BMC who wanted to look at AHA. So he would look mm -hmm. at uh, my AHA slides every uh, quarter or so and look at what, what's happening, how things are shaping up. So mm -hmm. all these tools, they help you visualize what somebody had in uh, in his or her, her head. So that has definitely, uh, I mean, with the advent mm -hmm. of all these, uh, primarily with teams getting more and more agile, Mm -hmm. Our visibility of that uh, strategy is becoming more and more realistic because now mm -hmm. you're not looking, you know, uh, five kilometers ahead. You are looking at what's happening in next sprint, what's happening in next release, so on mm -hmm. and so forth. Any document or any uh, uh, product backlog that gets created today is uh, created with a uh, sense of six to nine months in head. So as a mm -hmm. product person, if you know what's going to happen in next six to nine months, you're doing a fairly decent job. And then you keep course correcting. Second thing that has come to our uh, rescue now is that our ability to read data and mm. then uh, being able to infer from it. Mm. We've always had huge uh, terabytes of data and whatnot, but our ability to analyze that data, that read that data, be able to learn from it, that has come forward in last, I, I believe, six, seven, eight years. Please correct mm. me if I'm wrong, Vatsal, I that both. So our ability to read this data and be able to infer from it, learn from it is also helping us. Mm. One of the days when a business decision was based on a leader's you know, whims and fancies. Every time you today go to a leader and you want to even get a sponsorship for a certain project, you will mm. have to go with data. So this now before we are starting up with, we have fair idea uh, of what is going to happen. We can predict mm. a lot of uh, outcomes based on the data that we have. So these right. tools around data, these tools around management of uh, resources, management of your backlogs, etc., tickets, mm. basically workload management, whatever you're using, whatever mm. tool you're using, it could be any. They have definitely come to your help. And then these things have helped you visualize the strategy that you are trying to uh, take. And it, with that vision in front of you, you're able to predict your pitfalls, you're able to prepare better, you're able to learn better, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. So that's my take at it. Thank you. Thank you, Vishal. Uh, thank you. And, and uh, you made it very evident that uh, yes, strategy is now no longer uh, uh, just a piece of paper. It has to be real. It has to be working. It, uh, it has to work for you. And definitely, yes, even in thinking, in whether you are in a planning phase or Right? You are thinking on those steps on how, uh, what should be my strategy for the next quarter. That data, the the ability to that data now for the technical, because in the technology, okay, it is the data. What does that data mean for you? What is that data showing it to you? 
that's super important and uh, i think so that is helping our leaders to uh, think about the next uh, steps and, and for us we will say next quarter strategy or maybe the next year strategy yeah super important yeah i one thing quickly uh, i think uh, with the uh, with all this information now we are able to make more informed decisions uh, a, a decision that a leader has made is no more a prediction mm. or it's it's no more uh, sorry no more a, you know a kind of an assumption yes it is actually a prediction based on the data that is in front of mm. him or her that is being mm. used so we are making more yes. and more informed decisions informed hence decisions. this uh, that strategy becoming more and more short term in a way i mean on the face of it it looks like it is short term but mm. it is not that it is a short term thing let's do three months and we forget about it it doesn't mm. mean that we don't know what's going to happen a year a year from here but what is the focus has shifted to your short term goals mm -hmm. and you're able to do that because you have data to support those decisions data that you're making in short term in mm. Totality. When all these things connect, you eventually end up having a uh, end result which is better informed and mm. uh, better, you know, curated. Yes. Thank you, Vishal. Thank you. Uh, now uh, another area which I'll like to touch upon. I think so. It will excite you guys. Is the collaboration across departments. Okay, that is where I think so. Uh, most of the fights are, or the most of the problems are. How to collaborate. How to make it real? Okay, so now uh, since we are uh, our uh, topic is strategy, so I cannot leave that word strategy. Okay, so I'm trying to fit in the strategy uh, uh, between the engineering and the product management. Okay, so how does like these two different departments or the areas? Okay, in a lot of companies we have a particular department, founders office or a PMO who's taking care of strategy by large. Okay. In some, uh, it, it is not, whatever. But then the corporate strategy versus the engineering and product management. How these guys okay, collaborate together. Uh, uh, Vishal, yeah, yeah. you can. <laughs> okay, thank you. I think this is a little more in my space. I'm sorry, Siddharth. What's up? Uh, what's, uh, uh, you know, I agree. This is your core space. And, okay, so, and you should be the first one to speak about it. <laughs> so both these gentlemen are senior to me. So I'll just try to start and I'm sure they'll help me, if, uh, you know, kind of close it. So uh, I think uh, interestingly and fortunately for more, more and more IT industries, we are taking a product centric approach. Now we are treating ourselves as solutions and not some, you know, service that I'm offering. Uh, mm -hmm. So we are trying, I mean, even at BMC when I was, used to work with them. So we wanted to take this approach that everything that we are offering let us mm -hmm. not call it a product or a service or something. Let's call it a solution. So we are solving a problem every time we are uh, working with a customer. We are building a, some product for them or service mm -hmm. and, and so on and so forth. So with within with the advent of this uh, product-based approaches, uh, what has happened, a, a vertical has gotten created within mm -hmm. the CXO where there is a product uh, office as well. Now the mm -hmm. product office has a, not equal but as much say in any decision that takes place. So the moment uh, a particular vision is handed over to the product guys or the product vertical, it belongs to us after that. And yeah. we kind of try to run it. But mm -hmm. uh, what uh, I think the cautious approach that current uh, market has taken is that uh, we are trying to make products look like a collective effort. Mm -hmm. No one person can create a product. No one person mm -hmm. can create a service. It is a collective mm -hmm. effort. And mm -hmm. managing all these stakeholders who are getting involved in a particular product, they mm -hmm. are involved at very beginning at the inception level. So if I'm mm -hmm. writing a new feature, for, for example, so mm -hmm. it is not that I'm sitting somewhere idle and just writing some uh, Jira and then sending it over to somebody like a Vatsale that please get help us getting it done and so on and so forth. We are involving the marketing, we are involving the sales, we are invo even sometimes the legals, you'll be surprised that legals are uh, teams are also part of when a product uh, is, is being conceived. So mm -hmm. you're you start from there. That is where you're involving everybody. So mm -hmm. uh, for a strategy to work, it has to have ownership from all the stakeholders who will mm -hmm. touch that product or that service mm -hmm. in any shape and form throughout its life cycle. Mm -hmm. So I have to have a say from a marketing person because that person has to write a script for me later on when the product is ready to be shipped. Mm -hmm. For it to work, I have to have legals buy in as well because they will write a contract when I'm selling mm -hmm. it. Hmm. I have to have a buy-in from Vatsalya because they are the ones who will actually do the work, who will do the hmm. uh, heavy lifting for me. So Vatsalya will hmm. tell me that, you know, you it is not feasible with my current stack. Hmm. I have to have a buy-in from Siddharth who will tell me my infra doesn't support it. Hmm. 
DevOps mm-hmm. is not going to help you when you go to a customer. Mm-hmm. So this collaborative approach that has taken uh, its shape and thanks to Agile, that people are now uh, informed <clears throat> about a certain decision or a certain product or a certain service at mm-hmm. very beginning, at the very inception level of it. Mm-hmm. And the organizations, those have been able to do that, you will see them flourish more. Mm-hmm. So when we see a, let's say an Apple example, it's very cliche to give Apple examples, but when you see <laughs> an Apple uh, uh, releasing a particular product or a particular feature, it is the CEO who is talking about it, but he's mm-hmm. not the only one sitting there. His product mm-hmm. person is sitting right in front of him. So mm-hmm. uh, so similarly, I've seen it in uh, at practice while at Aon, even at BMC, that when we were going to a, a, a training team or when we were going to a sales conferences, etc. So I will not go alone. I will take a documentation mm-hmm. guy along with me. I'll take mm-hmm. an engineer with me. I'll take a QA guy with me so that they know firsthand what's happening, what's not. Mm-hmm. So I think people are now trying to get involved at more and more uh, initial levels of the projects. And then they stay connected through stakeholder management. PMs mm-hmm. play an important role in that. Secondly, in India in particular, I think, and this is my personal theory, I mean, uh, I may be wrong and I'll happily be wrong if, if, if anybody can kind of me correct me here, that uh, IT industry and a whole in India has evolved itself. Mm-hmm. The average yeah. age who is uh, uh, working in IT earlier used to be 21, 22. Mm-hmm. Now it is uh, mid 30s. Uh, mm-hmm. Not that we are all, I'm sure we are all below 30. But the average age now is, is, is uh, you know, in 30s. So how what it has done is that it has given us a lot of learning that we have carried from 90s till now. And we are able to contribute to the IT industry or uh, contribute to the organizations more organically now compared to just being a cost center that we used to Mm. be in 90s. So that has had a great impact on involvement. A lot of decisions are now happening from these erstwhile called cost centers Mm. now and they Mm. are being now renamed to centers of excellences and whatnot. All the things that are coming in that used to be there earlier uh, offshore. So Mm. I think uh, these things have helped. I mean, overall Mm. we're maturing as an industry. Uh, We are getting better and better uh, participation, we are making more valued uh, contribution towards building products, services, and so on, which is resulting in the bottom line, eventually our share on the overall recognition of the product or o- overall recognition in the organizations. Yeah. Thank you, Vishal. Uh, uh, I think so, Vishal, what uh, you brought forward is uh, the collaboration uh, in terms of creating the strategy between these two departments is crucial. And also now how people are finding opportunities when they are collaborating. Obviously, they will find opportunity. People are coming forward to create. Uh, yeah. Uh, and thank you, Vishal. Uh, I hope you are not retiring me out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, <clears throat> okay, jokes apart. Uh, what's uh, I, I like to come to you. And first, I like to have an answer in yes or no, if if you find that, okay? Yeah. Now, do you see the there is a gap between the engineering slash product management team and the corporate strategy or the deadlocks? Have you seen those deadlocks happening? So, yeah, to answer, if you have to get in a yes and a no, I'll say yes, there okay. are gaps and there are conflicts. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. lately, I think on adding on to Vishal's point, initially what was like a decade earlier, it was strategy which was defined first. Mm-hmm. And then the product and the technology were the next steps that were. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But lately with the technology playing a bigger role and the market being more evolutive where you can come up with ideas. Now mm-hmm. tech companies especially, they are coming up with technology POCs. Mm-hmm. They are doing a product innovation. And once they, they test it out in the market, and mm. if that model works, then they're building a strategy around it. Mm. So it's the other way around now. So mm. in some areas, while strategy is defined first, mm. in many of the areas, technology and product are working together to help define mm. a strategy. Right. Programs, I'm working for a leading uh, logistic organization of the world. They, we, we were working on carbon emissions and they mm-hmm. said, okay, we're working on simple, simple entities. Our team proposed a model where we can build a platform around it, where all their mm-hmm. transactions, like mm-hmm. if they are paying someone, that could be converted to carbon credits. Like mm-hmm. we do a PTM. So the idea, we, we built a POC, we innovated around it, we gave them a small demo. It mm-hmm. took two months to get through their change control boards and their CTO offices. And eventually after six months, it came up that that would be a new offering by that mm-hmm. customer to the market. And mm-hmm. they built an entire strategic team. What is the market penetration? What are the customers they're looking at? And once it went live in three months, we got to know three leading players got onto that platform. They became the customers. So there are involvement step up 
from being just mm-hmm. an engineering or product partner we became a mm-hmm. strategic partner mm-hmm. so from my perspective it's all about the thought and i think vishal's point to at when like india has evolved now mm-hmm. we are no longer as vendors like we typically say oh this is an mm-hmm. it vendor we have evolved as partners but mm-hmm. then it's time for us to get into consultative role where people look and say hey can you help us define mm-hmm. a product roadmap and strategy can you help us define where the industry would trend mm-hmm. and in my experience I worked with some companies based out of the West Coast, and they were very appreciative. The VP product engineering was like product manager was like, "What should I help help my teams define what our product should be?" Mm-hmm. And then our teams did a research and analysis, and they were all like, they were all POs, product owners mm-hmm. and business analysts. They analyzed their product, they analyzed their competitors' products. They came up with, "Oh, this is the backlog that you should execute." Mm-hmm. So that's the way I think the industry is maturing, and especially with India maturing on technology. i think product is not left behind we are all getting more in products but then this is the where we'll we'll come up with more strategic ideas to take the world mm-hmm. thank you asal i think so audience would be would have loved to get that insight of india uh, as a technology grew and how now we are able to uh, guide uh, the world uh, on setting up their uh, strategies or uh, being into that consultative role as a subject matter expert yeah true very important siddharth uh now see uh while we say that yeah there can be a deadlock between engineering uh and the corporate strategy uh can uh, can you help us with some uh, examples of what kind of a deadlocks do happen between the engineering and the strategy team have you experienced oh, yes. that's, that's something uh, as uh, in the last question was vishal's area and then this is my area to talk about <laughs> <laughs> right so uh, you know when uh, product and product team and engineering team comes together or maybe um, many other collaborative departments whoever is willing to develop a product now there could be certain challenges mm-hmm. first challenge is the communication breakdown mm-hmm. this is always not sufficient communication or probably uh, the communication is not delivered properly or not adapted properly mm-hmm. so there is always a gap and mm-hmm. uh, then i'm i'm talking about the challenges and i'll, I'll uh, come to the solutions later mm-hmm. so second challenge in my mind is basically misalignment of the goals mm-hmm. initially when usually those kickoffs are done so no one knows who is supposed to do what those mm-hmm. allocation comes later and the alignments after the alignment of the goal is done then you have a bigger challenge which is your uh, resource allocation issue mm. you already have a limited stock of resources you do mm. not know who will do what and what do i point to where mm. and after uh, you know if even if these three points are addressed then you come to the uh, bigger bottleneck which is the visibility mm. it, in spite of all communications all the goal alignment resource allocation you still cannot guarantee that everyone has the same visibility which the uh, project initiator has right that's where mm-hmm. you see and here even if you uh, you know communicate that you drill down to the last point wherein there is a resistance to change mm-hmm. largely you know the people they know the mm. new which is coming is definitely better than what we had earlier or uh, but still they are more comfortable in their previous space because they know the usabilities they know the uh, ins and outs mm. and this mm. mindset where people do not want to accept new challenges mm. that's what can is a general uh, uh, phenomenon which mm. which which basically you know uh, about this no and thank you so much Okay. please please carry on okay. yeah, sorry so uh, basically what would i see to uh, bridge those gaps uh, it's uh, as as uh, point wise point if i go my first point probably i mentioned was communication breakups so mm. we need to foster a culture of open communication and collaborations mm. we actually need to have uh, you no know, a little more uh, open culture uh, people are people should be uh, you know uh, Uh, empowered enough to put their values in mm-hmm. and this should be usually uh, however as vishal and vatsalya also agreed 
that we have matured as an industry, we have matured as a technology part of the world. Uh, things are definitely getting better. But uh, the time which uh, I and Vatsalya and probably you have seen earlier, there would be a sense of listening to the people, listen, uh, do what I tell you to do, was a very common statement in many organizations. Mm. Don't apply your brains. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm really going very, uh, you know, uh, uh, Hands on. micro level. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, once the communications are addressed, uh, then you need to have, uh, you know, your cross-functional teams to encourage interaction between departments. Mm. I, as a technology person, would probably wouldn't know how the finance works. Mm. What is uh, their flowchart of the function? And if I need to support them for a program, for an even project or, uh, or an application, unless I understand their uh, business, their terminologies, their uh, jargons and their, uh, you know, uh, uh, work program, I will never be able to, uh, you know, uh, support them in, in any product development. Mm -hmm. Thereafter, uh, the goals and key performance indicators should always be aligned and monitored and reviewed. And... Uh, the accountability that matters mm. that in, in all uh, departments at least either team or a team lead or, or any function head has to be set accountable for how things are moving ahead and if there is a project delay if there is a lag uh, then why there is a lag is there is a communication issue, issue is there is a, a resource allocation issue or, or whatsoever thereafter the low uh, you know uh, the regular reviews and feedbacks we've talked about in mechanism to address uh, issues uh, promptly. We cannot uh, sit onto the issues. We mm. need to be vocal. Uh, yeah, I believe uh, thereafter, there's an important role which is uh, uh, played by trainings. Mm. Learning. Learning in and department. Uh, just I believe uh, we, as we all work in a very collaborative environment and uh, functions, uh, cannot work in their designs. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone needs to understand uh, the complete functionality of other functions. And that's where, you know, you actually design a complete robust model of a business mm -hmm. product. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's what my take on this. <clears throat> Thank you, Siddharth. And uh, uh, it was uh, like... Uh... Uh, you were sharing our product roadmap, jobs product roadmap, and jobs product features. Uh, super important. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, but 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 uh, but super important. See, uh, uh, first of all, I'll pick uh, the alignment part that you said, right? And alignment is super critical uh, in the organization. Whether you talk about just the engineering and the corporate uh, uh, corporate strategy team. They have to be aligned together, super critical. Uh, alignment can have multiple meanings for multiple roles, multiple people, okay. multiple departments. But the point is, are they clear? Now comes the visibility part. Once you are aligned, then what is the visibility? And visibility exactly. also comes with the clarity. Ki, am I clear? Am I clear what, what I have to do? Am I clear with what I'm expecting from you also? So right. these are the very, these are the, I think, the pillars. And nowadays, uh, we are seeing that uh, the leaders like you guys who are coming forward and who are being very vocal and even for like open uh, feedback mechanism. Now gone are the days where people were just very restricted towards giving the feedback or even requesting the feedback. Now people are very yeah. vocal about an open feedback mechanism. Why can't I uh, give my feedback to my RO? To my reporting officer, why can't why a reporting officer can only give feedback to the team members? It can happen both ways. Why only three sixty? Exactly. Why only three sixty? Why not open open system? Okay. So I think so. These are the very important thing, uh, thing uh, uh, areas, and definitely yes. It uh, once we work on these areas, the deadlock between any department, okay, can can be solved, and there can be a very uh, a growth path uh, for that particular team, for the department, or the company can be established. Uh, looking at the time, uh, one of the very key area, I think the so, audience will also love to hear from you guys. I've been hearing uh, uh, <clears throat> Vishal and I've been hearing this term 
as, as a technology person, I know this term very well, but I think some uh, our audience would like to understand uh, how does agile okay, methodology or agility help me achieve my individual goals? Okay, so Vishal, yes, yes, I know you. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> see, I'll tell you what. Uh, see, I built a feature. Uh, I I wrote. Uh, I mean, I, we did thorough research about it, and uh -huh. we wrote some six seven uh, miles of text around uh, the feature. Vishal, Vishal, concept. Vishal, Vishal. Can can you also quote some examples? Yeah, yeah. So uh, we are we are working. We were working with uh, BMC. We had an integration platform as a service, a Helix mm -hmm. iPaaS. So it's a great, great platform. Anybody looking for integrations, I think that's the place to go. I don't work with them anymore, but yeah, it's still a great product. Uh, I put in my blood and sweat to kind of build that. So uh, we we built up a lot of integrations that we thought will work, and we wrote one uh, where I, I don't want to name the uh, vendor, but yeah, the, we uh, with. One of the BMC products, we wrote an integration with that particular uh, uh, procurement management kind of a product. And we wrote a lengthy use case and it was a huge, huge uh, kind of task for us, first of all, and then later on for engineering teams to, to develop that. Now, <clears throat> we had this great uh, push from the sales teams that, you know, we have a customer waiting for it, go ahead and build it and we'll sell it the next day and blah, blah, and whatnot. So we decided that let's, you know, build this entire feature in a one go and uh, make it available as soon as possible. We fortunately or unfortunately consumed one entire release to develop that. We put in a lot of resources onto that and uh, we developed that particular integration. And, and now we're ready waiting for a customer to take it up. Surprisingly, well, not surprisingly as much, nobody wanted it. Uh, so uh, now it's well, customer doesn't want it anymore. You can't blame anybody. Salesperson has his, he has everything documented. See, the customer's interested in blah. Uh, how uh, had we tried to stay true to our uh, agile uh, processes? We would have uh, handled this thing better. How mm -hmm. we would have broken this entire thing into smaller, uh, tangible uh, uh, sprints and mm -hmm. created that one big feature or epic could have been broken into smaller stories and then we could have mm -hmm. uh, released one piece at a time mm -hmm. shown that teaser of the particular uh, 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 functionality or feature that we've created to a customer gotten feedback around it and in case it was not up to the expectation of the customers we could have course corrected and we could have you know uh, made it look better now all that is aside how what I look at it as a personal loss in that case is that I engage an entire engineering team, an entire one squad in developing that feature. They spent around six weeks, eight weeks to do that. For those entire say, eight weeks, that's the only thing that they were living and breathing in. Mm -hmm. So uh, in agile method, what you get to do is you get to do different things simultaneously. You get mm -hmm. to focus on so many things simultaneously. Mm -hmm. You get to explore so many things simultaneously in a shorter mm -hmm. span of time. Mm -hmm. So as an indi your individual exposure to number of technologies, number of activities, even within the same role, that increases. Mm -hmm. You remember your waterfall days, 2006, 7, 8, when I was to work mm -hmm. for uh, uh, Hewitt Associates, it's waterfall, three months, sit mm -hmm. idly, right requirement, mm -hmm. and then Vatsale will come and he will do his thing. And now I am sitting idle and then all that, <laughs> you know, I don't want to blame yeah. them. Those days I've paid for the bills, but yeah. still it was like that. So how Agile helps you today is that mm -hmm. it keeps you, first of all, abreast of what's happening in the market. It keeps you mm -hmm. on your toes. It makes sure that you're not wasting your time. Mm -hmm. It makes sure that uh, for an engineering lead or a product team or even for uh, the uh, Siddharth's teams, you're not wasting mm -hmm. your resources mm -hmm. on some those uh, could have happened use cases, those off mm -hmm. use cases that we kind of always, you know, block our capability. What if cases that they call them typically? We block our capability. What if this happens? That happens. So I'll keep this. So all these people who are guard guarding the what if are actually losing on their productivity. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we are delivering at the cost of somebody's learnings. And at times, some uh, we are learning at the cost of delivery. Mm -hmm. So what Agile does is it strikes that right balance in it. Mm -hmm. You deliver while you learn. You learn while you deliver. So that mm -hmm. is the difference that I see. That's how I think that Agile brings value into the system. Mm -hmm. That in all other non-Agile ways, you are mm -hmm. either delivering at the cost of somebody's learning or mm -hmm. you are learning at the cost of delivery. Mm -hmm. While you are agile, what you are doing is you are delivering while you are learning or you are learning mm -hmm. while you are delivering. That mm -hmm. is, I mean, in my six, seven, eight years that I have been 
bro agile i have mm-hmm. had my you know activist days uh, in <laughs> endorsing uh, the uh, uh, waterfall models and what not <laughs> but uh, when i have started practicing agile and i have seen the benefits of it so yeah. i think that is the biggest shift that has i have, mm-hmm. I have experienced as a yeah. agile practitioner you are learning every day you are delivering every day mm-hmm. that is a difference yes there are challenges sometimes you will feel bogged down by mm-hmm. the sheer volume of the uh, agile ceremonies mm-hmm. <laughs> there is a scrum call there is a stand yeah, up there is a yeah. burnout call there is a blah blah and what not mm-hmm. and i have because i am a product person so every day i do not have a lot to contribute mm-hmm. to a stand and call but i never miss it mm-hmm. for the sheer pleasure of knowing what happened yesterday mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. sometimes for the sheer pleasure of gossip uh, you get <laughs> here you know which qa messed up something which developer doesn't feel like good and and what not which use case that i wrote doesn't make any sense at all and what not mm-hmm. so i think it it, it builds those closely knit teams yeah. for you uh, you're better equipped you're you're learning every day you're delivering every day mm-hmm. that is the value that uh, agile brings to it i am a big mm-hmm. fan of agile so those who still think are not <laughs> hear it from an activist of the uh as there's days or the uh, uh, waterfall days uh, agile said to stay and it's here to prosper yeah yeah for sure and i think so agile gives you those wings uh, to execute your strategy well and uh, and we are also learning one of uh, uh, a client who is into a tech agency and uh, into digital marketing space so uh, they asked us a question that ravi how uh, we can practice agile in terms of strategy execution right so the very first thing now i'm coming the, with that question to vatsal uh, very quickly because we have some questions also uh, interesting one so uh, as uh, as vishal said that yes you have to uh, be very agile and agile helps you uh, in execution of your goals okay because you can execute it and and see it if it is working or not working take the course corrective measures and largely collaborate okay now connecting it to the now going a bit one level up at a strategy level if i have to now broke break my strategy fragmentize my strategy okay so does that work so ravi <clears throat> there are two parts to it one uh, going a bottoms up approach where agile helps into strategy yes it definitely does but uh, agile talks about breaking things into mm-hmm. things that can be executed which mm-hmm. can be tested tried that is number one but then mm-hmm. it also talks about a lot of changing adaptability to the change right. mm-hmm. so because things are changing even the customers are not sure like what the mm-hmm. trend i see is the customers come up with requirements they want to do something mm-hmm. and they have a deadline but what is that something have we detailed to a level where those stories are there those acceptance mm-hmm. criteria are there the mm-hmm. definitions are done there they are still not there so mm-hmm. they are evolving and unfortunate part is they're evolving when the teams groomings are being done after those groomings those details are coming up so which right. is not the right model but mm. even the customers can't help it because this is the way mm. the vuka world is moving around right. so for me the overall vision strategy thing would remain the same it's just a long term mm. goal where we want mm. to mm-hmm. but shorter steps we do step by step are we heading mm. we have a direction to go we mm. will walk on the direction there may mm. be areas we may have to step back with there mm. could be some deviations but then we do need a uh, a north star there mm. so there a strategy and a vision is very very important because it is mm. the ultimate objective of that team and i think mm. we shall talk about that part as well individual goals versus team goals for me like mm. if you have a team that is coordinated coherent and they know what is to be done they will do it mm. it could take some more time it could some team more effort there could be some battle bruises some people may fall off some may come in but then eventually teams do that and again mm. leaders managers they do play a critical role in getting all these things right so the enablement mm. part has to be there during mm. this conversation. but again it's like a journey which the teams have to do the members have to be part and committed to it to make mm. sure they are 100% aligned over the what they want to do so if mm. those elements are there then i think strategy and vision is something there's just a matter of time this is the journey that they have to complete and they'll be able to right. yeah a beautiful it's a journey and yes we have to be committed towards that journey right and aligned uh, siddharth i'll come to you with, with this question though i do not understand because uh, mr prashant has only mentioned that where the gap happens and how uh, it is redefined so let me reframe this question uh, if the, if the if i can put it in the right way so now uh, how going on moving from quarter to quarter right okay 
where do gap happens and how from quarter to quarter we can redefine ourselves restart ourselves and see that what course corrective measures are we taking i think so he's pointing towards that would you like to say anything about that yes sure uh, do i need to click that answer live or no no you can just answer okay, i can answer so basically uh, you know uh, if we talk about uh, where the gap happens right from the communication to the conceptualization of the product hmm. everywhere there is a possibility of happening a gap hmm. not necessarily the person who has actually you know conceived a product and he wants to convey to the stakeholders and want to take their consent not necessarily he is a very good communicator and he is able to transfer his idea or the thought that okay look this is what i want to develop and this is what it is going to deliver maybe he has the idea the product but he doesn't know what is exactly going to be the outcome or probably he is able to impress his stakeholders with their outcome mm. so that's a gap right and there are multiple gaps it could mm. be in communication it could be in adaptation it could be in transmission of the idea so there could be uh, you know different gaps however mm. uh, as you said uh, how do we fix them it's definitely uh, there could be review meetings there could be mm-hmm. understanding there could be another persons another person involvement who see i could have uh, you know uh, uh, if i were vishal i probably know uh, what is the product i'm going to design mm-hmm. but i am not sure how do i convey this to my stakeholders and i do not know from the business perspective how this is going to be the a uh, product for them mm-hmm. right so i probably need to seek help from somebody around maybe cross function maybe interdepartment whosoever and then communicate the same to the team and uh, yeah delivering the values showing them the values and bringing people on the same page uh, the key point is the communication mm. right a super important communication Yeah, and the and, and the clarity, right? The gap will uh, gap are bound to happen, but how to identify those gaps are also critical, and then how to communicate it back, and then uh, see it how we are going to resolve it, create a strategy around it. Okay, maybe a very very short term one, maybe uh, another six months if uh, there's a huge gaps. Okay, and I think so. With respect to time, we are just going to uh, uh, end the webinar. Uh, I won't be able to. uh so prashant says thank you <laughs> thank you prashant for asking the question uh so let me just summarize uh, i think so it was a very interesting uh uh, uh webinar where uh, we saw hands on uh, technology uh, experience where we saw technology connecting it to the strategy where we saw how uh, uh, the uh, the strategy is able to work in a agile way and how we can uh, break the strategy into different different smaller parts and execute it and uh, i think so i'm looking forward to host another webinar because a lot of our uh, clients from tech uh, service spaces do come to us and ask a question that how technology how those developers how those engineering team can be the part of uh, can come out of jira and be the part of that uh, strategy as very well you said uh uh what's that now people are coming up they are finding up opportunity they are connecting it back so thank you uh, thank you everyone for attending the webinar and thank you uh, uh, uh thanks for uh, uh, uh for asking the questions and thank you uh, vishal thank you watsalya thank you sadha to take out time on your weekday on thursday thursday evening thanks a lot looking forward thank you